Hi, good morning. Uh, this is uh, Balu here uh, from SP Tech. Uh, today we're going to start with uh, uh, software design, uh, and we are going to look into part one of uh, software design. I'll take you to the uh, session objectives. So, what are we going to cover in this uh, chapter? We are going to talk about uh, software design. Uh, we are also going to, uh, you know, look into the design process of uh, software and uh, we should also throw some light on design models. So what exactly is uh, software design? As you can see from the slide, it is a meaningful representation of something to be built. Now when you talk of design, it is basically an intermediary stage between the analysis and the actual software which is being developed. So we call it as a meaningful representation of something to be built, which means that when you look at the design, you get a fair idea of how the software is going to look like in the near future. And it is a process by which requirements are translated into a blueprint for constructing a software. Now, what exactly you do in a software design is, uh, we basically convert requirements into a blueprint. Now, uh, where do we get this uh, requirements? We get all these requirements from SRS. You know what SRS is, SRS stands for uh, Software Requirement uh, Specification. It is a document which basically uh, contains all types of requirements. We take that SRS as an input and do a design process. Now who does a design process, uh, software engineers, design engineers and variety of uh, people who have got expertise in design process will basically participate in the design. And the outcome of that uh, design process would be something called as a software design. Now, uh, please understand here, now there are two things. One is called a problem domain and the second one is called a solution domain. Now, what is a problem domain? When you are actually dealing with SRS, you are still working on the problem. You have still identified the problem, you have identified the requirements of a customer, but you do not know how to implement a solution. Or I would rather put it in that way, you will not know how the solution is going to look like. You will get a fair idea of how the solution is going to look like only when we come to the solution domain. And the solution domain is an output of your software design process. Now, therefore, we can see that this software design can also work as a blueprint which gives us a holistic view of a software. So what do you mean by a holistic view of a software? It gives me a picture of how my software is going to look like and always remember that software design is still on the drawing board which means that it is actually put on a drawing board actually means that it is not still in a working model it is on a drawing mode which means it has to be implemented as a working model in the further stages now what exactly we do in the software design process now just have a look at this uh, particular diagram now you have stage one the stage one uh, stands for problem analysis we have uh, dealt with uh, this problem analysis in multiple number of occasions during this video series. So what do we do in problem analysis? Straightforward, we get the requirements from the customer. Now once you do that, uh, we call that as a requirement engineering process. Now the output of that uh, problem analysis is an SRS document, what is software called as software requirement specification. Then from there, we get into the design. Now the outcome of that uh, design is basically a design document. Now one thing we have to understand here is, the design process involves two things. We call it as diversification and convergence. Now we will uh, understand what exactly you mean by diversification and convergence. Now why are you basically doing a design? We are actually do doing a design to solve a problem. And uh, when we are coming out of the design document, generally it's a good idea to have more than one design to a problem or more than one solution to a problem. You cannot create only one design to one problem and say that this is the actual design I am going to convert that into a solution. That may not be a fair idea. So basically we have to do diversification. Diversification means many or many types of design documents which are being proposed for a particular problem. Once you propose multiple number of designs to a problem, then what we do, we do a activity called convergence. So what do you mean by convergence? Out of those many designs, we need to choose which is the best design for this particular problem. And this can be done through brainstorming. 
where many people participate and debate on various designs, identify the flaws in the design and say, okay, for this particular problem, this is the most recommended and the viable design which can be adopted into a solution. Now, outcome of that design are design models where which could involve uh, block diagrams, which could involve data flow diagrams, which could involve system architecture, which could involve interface and components. More on this, uh, what exactly are block diagrams and how do you work with them? We can see that in the future uh, sessions in my video series. Now, the, uh, now, what you do in design is basically you come out with a design model and the design model is an outcome of uh, this diversification and convergence process. Okay, now uh, once you have identified a design and you have vetted the design and you have come to a conclusion that yes, this is the design which I am going to actually implement into a software product or a solution, then you have to adhere that design to the quality metrics. Check out whether the design complies with the quality policy of your organization or the quality process which you are following within the organization. Then from there, you just head on into the development. Now, what is the development? Uh, development is where you have software engineers pooling in. These software engineers will read the de uh, design and they will convert that particular design into an actual working program or we can output of that particular development would be an working software. Now, once you are done with that, then you actually move on to testing. Now, this testing is a stage where you convert that particular working software and into various uh, uh, test it on various test cases and see whether that particular software is working as per the requirements or not and after the testing is complete you go ahead and deploy that particular software at the customer's place and once you do that the customer will do something called as user inter user acceptance testing now what is a user acceptance testing it's a testing where the customer will check whether that particular software is working as per the requirements or not if it is working fine, you can say that the user acceptance testing has been successfully satisfied and the customer has accepted and blessed your product. Yes, okay, he may go and suggest few changes which you may have to go and add those uh, changes, what we call it as, uh, you know, modifying or the software is under the maintenance mode. Or even after the software has been developed and after some time if new business requirements changes, then the customer may add more requirements and that again gets into a problem analysis stage and then it gets into a design stage so the entire cycle continues so we can solve this software design as an uh, iterative process which means the process keeps on continues as long as you know there is a continuous activity happening between the customer and the software engineering uh, people who are actually working on that particular product okay now what are what are the main characteristics of a uh, design so basically uh, you need to understand that uh, uh, design is a very creative activity because you have to be very creative you have to think out of the box when you are actually doing the design and it is very critical activity during system development why because if the design goes bad the entire software deliverable goes bad so you have to ensure that it is a most critical activity spend more time on the design and see that people who are experienced in designing are actually pulled in to do this, to, to, to do this particular activity and it has a great impact on testing and maintenance so what does that mean once if your design is complete and uh, if your design uh, is correct then it has got an impact on testing and maintenance that means the how well you write a test case okay it depends upon how well you have actually designed that particular uh, software that means the it will it will basically have a methodology the design has a methodology which has an indirect influence on uh, testing and maintenance you know that maintenance basically means uh, changes in uh, requirements so when the requirements changes probably you may have to go back to the design and make some changes in the uh, design as uh, well therefore if your design is very really, really good any small changes here and there you should be able to incorporate those changes in the design without causing much effect on the overall design of that particular software and maintenance should become an easier task and design document forms a reference for later phases of course yes that is because once your design is complete we use the design for coding we use the design for testing we use the design for maintenance we even use the design for configuration management 
where we are going to change the business requirement or any requirements given by the customer so design document you know becomes a reference for later phases now i have proposed and shown you one design model here so what exactly is a design model the design model basically tells me what are the different levels of design so the initial design what you have is called as a data design so the outcome of the data design is a data structure so what is the data structure the data structure could be your arrays it could be your database structure itself where you have tables and you have other elements of the database now how did you get this uh, data structure you got this data structure uh, uh, from entity relationship model which came from the analysis stage we will talk about this in my uh, future session i will just talk about and explain you how exactly the data design is accomplished then you have an architectural design architectural design basically shows relationship among structural elements so what are structural elements structural elements could be the various subsystems of your uh, uh, software for example you are designing an atm machine uh, the atm machine has got multiple subsystems you have a card reading as one card reader as one subsystem you have a printer as another subsystem uh, then you have uh, uh, a subsystem which basically uh, validates uh, the uh, magnetic strip of a particular card so like this there are different subsystems uh, all the subsystems are called as structural elements and they come under architectural design so architectural design basically proposes a design where the entire system is uh, basically visualized in the form of subsystems and it is a top view of the entire system so it gives me a overall picture of what the system is going to look like then you have an interface design interface design talks about uh, human computer interaction like uh, how the customer or how an end user will basically interact with the system what are the various screens is going to access if there are any hardware interfaces how an hardware interface with the software what are the kinds of interaction happens between the uh, user and the hardware and hardware with the software so all these things comes under interface design and finally you have a procedural design where you give the procedural description of the software components now architectural design will only give me the subsystems whereas procedural design will tell me how the data is flowing between the subsystems now procedural design can be implemented using uh, uh, data flow diagrams it can be implemented through structure charts so we shall see more about uh, design models in my uh, next uh, video session uh, so see you then thank you so much for uh, watching this particular uh, video uh, do subscribe to our channel uh, sp tech and like us on our facebook page sp tech bang